Hi, this is Brad Argent from Ancestry. Today I want to talk to you about spitting in a tube. Yeah, if your upbringing was anything like mine, you were told never to spit and how disgusting it was. But of course, in order to get access to this wonderful DNA science, that's something that we need to do. So I get, keep getting asked a lot of questions about, you know, the spit process and what to do and what not to do. And so I thought I'd just uh, give you a couple of tips and tricks about how to get a good sample um, with minimum amount of fuss and hopefully the minimum amount of grossness as well. So medications. First thing, uh, medications. It's best not to do the test if you've had medications within the last 30 minutes. Um, really just so that, that we get a good clean sample. Now, if you're going through chemo, for example, it's probably best to wait till the treatment is out of the way um, and then take the DNA test. Um, alternatively, if, if you can't wait for that, then maybe you could test perhaps uh, a child or a sibling. Um, if you wanted to, you know, rush those results through. It would give you some indication and certainly give you some connections. Now, eating and drinking is another thing that comes up. Really, you shouldn't eat or drink about half an hour beforehand. Um, it's just so we don't get a contaminated sample. Now, what they really mean is don't have, uh, ideally don't eat uh, any food for about half an hour before you decide to take the test. And drinking, don't drink anything other than water for about half an hour before you take the test. Now, the, again, it's about contamination, but you've got to be hydrated, right? You've got to generate saliva, so you need to have some fluid in you. So don't we don't want you to dehydrate just to take a DNA test. So make sure you drink plenty of fluids, drink water, and you can drink water you know, right up to minutes before you take the test. What we want to do is we want to generate saliva. So how do you do that? So I've got a couple of tricks that I use when I'm getting people to do it. Um, and look, some people can generate saliva really easy and other people can take a long time. Particularly the older you get, the harder it becomes to generate saliva. So what I do is I just gently chew the inside of my cheek. I don't want to, I don't want to draw blood, but just gently chew it. Now that does two things. It generates saliva, but it also breaks off a few skin cells. And that's great because that helps us extract the DNA. And the other thing to think to do is to think about your favorite food, your absolute favorite food. And just imagine that. And I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I can tell you I'm starting to get uh, starting to get some saliva going. So that's and if you're going to test somebody else, particularly, uh, again, somebody who's a little bit older, these things can really help you get that good, solid sample. Now, this is the tube. Uh, you'll all see this or something very close to it, and you'll see that there's a little black line on there that you've got to fill up with spit. Now, it's liquid and not bubbles. Bubbles don't count, so you've got to get liquid. Now, it's about half a teaspoon. I kind of measured it out this morning. And it's about half a teaspoon of liquid. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it can take some people some time. I've uh, I've been at uh, at uh, sittings of this where it's taken up to half an hour to generate that amount of liquid, um, and I've been there when somebody's done it in one go. So wide variations, but you've got to fill it up to that little black wiggly line there with liquid, solid liquid, no bubbles. And then you simply detach the top, it unscrews, and then you just put this cap on. Now you can see there's some little blue liquid in that cap there. You screw it on, and you've got to screw it really tightly on, and you screw it until you hear this tiny little crack, and the blue liquid that's here will flow down in to your saliva, and you'll get a little bit of blueness in there. Now, don't be afraid to to tighten that very, very tightly. It does take some effort to break that seal, and that liquid in there will preserve the fluid in there as it makes its way to the lab. So, look, that's all. Just wanted to give you some tips and tricks for getting the best possible result and making sure that your sample got to the lab 
in one piece and you got your results as quickly as possible. Thanks for your time.